If you want to start perennial plants and native plants from seed, it's not as easy as just putting the seeds in the ground. And spring is not the best time of year to do it in many cases. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Join me today as I talk about sowing your flower seeds in the fall. Most of us learn to take a seed, put it in soil, give it some water and light, and it grows. And that works for most of the plants that we're growing in our vegetable gardens. But when we start thinking about landscape plants, we need to slow down and think about the other factors at play with the seeds, the soil, the light, the water, and more importantly, the temperature, because that can be a critical component. I'm building out this garden area and my new landscape at this new house. And I want a lot of flowers, a lot of perennials. But I don't want to go to the nursery and buy plants to fill this space because I'm talking hundreds of plants. I want flowers for pollinators. I want flowers for the birds. I want flowers for me to cut and bring into the house. It's just not cost effective to buy all of the plants I need, but it's very cost effective to grow those plants from seed. Now, I do have to have patience because with many of these perennials and native plants, it'll take a couple seasons, maybe even a few years before I get the flowers. But I'm okay with that because of the cost savings and because I've got a lot of other areas of this garden to build while I'm waiting for these plants to grow. So what I started with was a basic design, a basic idea of the types of flowers that I wanted. And then I went to Prairie Moon Nursery. Now, I have no affiliation with Prairie Moon. I just really like their catalog and they offer a lot of native plants that'll grow in my area. And I think Prairie Moon has one of the best catalogs to tell gardeners like me the best way to start all of those different seeds. And in this guide, starting from seed where it talks about germination, there are 12 different ways to start seeds, apart from just putting it into the soil. You have to realize that the different perennials and the different native plants have different requirements for their seed germination. Here's where temperature and time come into play when we're talking about germinating these type of seeds. What we're trying to do is mimic mother nature. So think about these perennial plants. They'll set seed, the seed will fall, it'll stay out on the ground all winter long, and then in spring, when the temperature's right, they'll germinate. Well, that's why this guide is so important, because that's basically what we're trying to do. When we grow inside from seed, we call it cold stratification. When we're putting the seed outside, we're just calling it Mother Nature at work. Well, Mother Nature does a lot more things that we have to anticipate with these seeds. So for example, some seeds require a hot water treatment where you cover them with boiling water and then you allow them to soak in place for 24 hours. There's another one that requires a certain number of days with those temperatures being cold or freezing. And so not everybody can grow these seeds in all locations. They need to germinate after sitting out over the winter with a cold, moist stratification, which means the soil and or the mulch shouldn't be dry. To get the best germination, they'll do best in a wet environment. There are some seeds that require light. That means you shouldn't bury the seeds because they won't germinate without being exposed to the sun. Some of these seeds need a warm, moist period followed by a cold, moist period and then are best to be sown in the spring after they've had that type of exposure. There are some seeds that require a double dormancy. They need a cold, moist winter, followed by a warm, moist summer, followed by a second cold, moist period, and then they're sown outside in fall to germinate the following year. Time 
and heat are very critical. Here's some that require cool season to germinate. So they're sown in late fall or early spring when the soil is cold. Some seeds need scarification. That means you need to actually damage the seed, the outer shell, by cutting it, scraping it. It won't germinate without that scarification. There are some that need inoculants to grow because they're legumes. There are some that are hemiparasitic, which means they won't germinate and grow unless they have another plant that they can grow connected to. Some, the seed needs to be kept moist before it's germinated, and it should be refrigerated during that entire time. But for many of the seeds in this catalog, just by planting in the fall, you can expect good results. Right about now, you're probably thinking, I don't want to go to that much trouble. And there's no problem with that. That's why most gardeners buy their perennials as plants. And why we'll buy annuals as plants too, because many of them have similar requirements when it comes to cold stratification. But for a big area like this, for me, seed is the way to go. And so I have 11 seed packets from the Prairie Moon Nursery and I'll be growing these over a period of years. I have lead plant, prairie pussy toes, common milkweed, button blazing star, cardinal flower, large flowered beard tongue, golden alexanders, palm sedge, violet wood sorrel, and an early sunflower. These are the plants that I'll be growing in this space and I'll also be growing in other areas of my garden. These are some of the flowers that will provide all of the benefits that I'm looking for. And many of these are the seeds that I'll be sowing this fall. Don't worry about taking notes or about me listing all of these plants in the description below, because these are the plants that I have chosen for my garden in this space. And I can almost assure you that your garden is nothing like mine. I specifically chose these plants because they don't require a lot of water. I live in a very dry area. This is full sun. Even though I'd like to grow some plants that grow in the shade, this area has no shade. It's full sun. So these were specifically chosen by me to go into an area with full sun, very little water, and pretty poor soil too. When you select your seeds, please look at your own garden setting. Look at your soil, look at your rainfall, look at your sun, and that's how you choose what seeds you're going to grow to sow in the fall. I'll be growing some of the plants in a prepared bed like this one. I already have amended soil in place, and it's a simple matter of just roughing up the surface of the soil and sowing the seeds. Most of them don't require much depth at all. So you just spread the soil, maybe pat it down a little bit, and that's it. You're done. We're not trying to get these seeds to grow right away. In fact, most of them won't. So there's no reason to water the seeds in at this point. We just let them sit in place over the winter into spring and wait for them to sprout. Now, because my area is exceptionally dry, I will cover the seeds with a light mulch. That'll help keep the soil a little moister for the occasional snow and rain that I get in those seasons. But it's not absolutely necessary. I am trying to mimic Mother Nature, and you should do the same. And in most areas, there is no bare soil in Mother Nature. There's some type of plant growing. There's some type of dead plant material on the surface. So these seeds, when they germinate, they'll be able to pop right through that light mulch with no problem whatsoever. But if the seed packet says that the seeds require sunlight for germination, well then don't cover them because they have to be exposed to be able to grow. This area is much closer to the way nature allows these plants to grow. When you have a perennial flower and the seeds spread around, it's going to encounter an area like this. It's not a prepared bed. There's already plants growing here. All I have to do is just loosen up the surface, just expose some of that soil, and then put the seeds down. And then I can actually just walk over this area once the seeds are in place 
and that's enough to ensure that the seeds have contact with the soil. We don't have to treat these seeds tenderly at this point. They're going to be exposed to a lot of weather. They're going to be exposed to animals. They're going to be exposed to conditions completely unlike what we would offer them in an indoor grow room. So step all over them and then allow them to grow. It does help to understand what your plants will look like when they're young. Because remember, it may take seasons, years for these plants to grow. All of these other plants will also start growing in the spring. I'll come back to this area and I'll look for those young seedlings. They should be relatively obvious. Then I can add some mulch around those plants. I can pull some of these other plants if maybe they're growing a little bit too close. I can start tending to all of the dozens of plants that I will have seeded in this area. Anticipate that you're going to get very low germination rates by sowing in the fall when you're trying to grow these type of plants. But that's okay because usually you'll get hundreds of seeds in these seed packets. This Penstemon has 300 seeds. Now normally when I've bought packets like this before and started the seeds indoors, I'm only growing a handful of plants, but I've got 300 seeds. Well, this is why there are so many seeds in packets like this from a company like Prairie Moon Nursery. This one, the cardinal flower, the lobelia, 700 seeds in this packet. So you can spread them all over. And even with a very low germination rate, you can still expect some flowers. And this seed packet only cost about $3. So if I get a fraction of these 700 seeds to germinate, well, I've definitely made my money back and much more because I didn't have to buy these plants. Now, if you don't want to gamble with the germination outside, you can still start some of these seeds indoors. These beautiful salvias, I started from seed, but I started the process this same time a year ago. I did the stratification. I did everything that you're supposed to do as though this seed was growing outside. It is a perennial. It will drop its seed. And I was mimicking mother nature as much as I could indoors. I got a handful of these plants, though I actually started a couple dozen. Even indoors, you can expect the germination rates to be lower than a lot of your other seeds because the conditions have to be just right. It can be a bit difficult to sow your seeds like this in the fall, wait through the winter into the spring, see how they germinate, and then take care of the plants past that point until they reach maturity and start giving you the flowers you want. It's a challenge for beginner and even intermediate gardeners, but I strongly suggest you consider it, not just for the cost savings, but because of everything you will learn during the process, during those years to get the flowers, because that's how you become a better gardener, by challenging yourself and trying some new things. And to also help you become a better gardener, I suggest you click on one of these Gardener Scott videos to help you on your journey. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>